and now for part one of Front Page Africa's exclusive interview with Vice President Joel Howard Taylor. Let's drift about a bit toward the relationship with uh, President George Weir. How would you describe it? And um, when last did you see him? And how was the mood like? I want to describe the relationship with President Weir as cordial. We had an opportunity to sit together at the 100th convocation of the University of Liberia. And if you look at the pictures, we were, you know, laughing and engaging. Um, I traveled at that point to take part in some women empowerment initiatives in other parts of the world. And I came back at the beginning of December and everyone was involved in their own personal celebrations for the Christmas. So I haven't seen him since then. But I believe that we have a cordial relationship um, between the two of us. Is the assignment as ascribed by the Constitution as a duty of the Vice President to assist the President's discharge of his duties, in your opinion, being performed by you? I mean, I think that question is a very difficult one, and I like to be fair. Uh, the Constitution states clearly that the Vice President shall assist the President in the discharge of his duties and serve as President of the Liberian Senate. It leads me to believe that those duties uh, should be ascribed by the President as to how the engagement should be and what interventions uh, are needed. Had I hoped that we would have worked more closely together? Yes, I, I do. And I remember campaigning with him across the country, across the region, discussing all of the issues, arguing about it, getting to a point where both of us uh, were comfortable enough to take it to the larger body. And so maybe I became spoiled. And I hope that as we moved into working for the people of Liberia, that that relationship would have been as close as it was. However, I must admit that, again, uh, my father used to say, if you don't walk a mile in someone's shoes, don't criticize them because you never know uh, the demons that people deal with. I know governance is, is not an easy thing, especially where we find ourselves with um, economic issues, security issues, uh, young people advocating for different things. And so the president is under extreme pressure. I hope as we move into the third year that some of those issues will even out and we'll begin to work. I'm hoping that I will get a little bit more involved in um, rebuilding our country as I do come to the table with quite a lot that I think can be beneficial. But I know that I must wait until the president feels maybe comfortable enough, if I should say that, to say, let's do this and let's do that. But I'm still hopeful. But what were your expectations when you decided to do this job? Well, my expectations were that the president and the vice president will work very closely together. I have to look back at our history and the relationship between Ambassador Joe Boyka and Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. I saw them work together very closely. Um, there are stories of, of, of presidents and vice presidents who have had some difficulties. So that is also in our national fabric. But let me sign this up as if it were a marriage. Maybe that's the best way I can explain it. That two people come from two different backgrounds and they decide to form a marriage and a family. And you get married, you go through all of the fun things, you've come from your honeymoon and uh, you get together and then you realize that your wife has some very annoying habits, irritating habits, I usually say. And that the wife finds out that the husband also has because we're not perfect beings. We strive every day to get along. 
because it's expected that we will. And it takes some doing. You know, sometimes you hear the older people say, people who are married, it takes between three to five years for them to settle. Acknowledging that each partner has positive and negative attributes. How we work it together so that there is harmony and peace is where the, the levels of tolerance are. And if you love one another and if you're interested in, you know, producing a family and rearing children, then it's important to work it out in a way that everybody is comfortable, knowing that, okay, this is what he, he is. He snores at night, you know, and I don't like making up the bed, for example. So we found a way to ignore some of the small things. And I believe if there are major issues, people should talk about it. So I think there's a, there's a time period in any new marriage that you know, both people will have to settle. And I think the two year period has definitely given us the opportunity to see each other a little bit more clearly. Um, we have a six year mandate from our country. And I'm praying that things get much better so that we can concentrate on the issues of governance and transform the lives of our people for which we were elected. What, what, what do you think is responsible for all these uh, is issues? You know, I, I, I cannot, as I sit here, blame any one person. Uh, there are compound issues. There are many people involved in this process. But the truth of the matter is, as I've sat here at home over the last few weeks, reflecting on the two years, reflecting on the people I've met and the challenges I've, I've endured and the prospects for a better future, I can only say that I pray that we will somehow find a balance. But then, you know, when you read the Bible, which is the only thing that I can lay my hands on, and it might not make sense to others, but I know that the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers and, and powers in high places. And the Bible reminds us that though we live here, we must be conscious that these beings are spirits, but they will inhabit bodies at specific times. Because the devil's work is to ensure that he destroys. Um, as a human, you must understand your destiny. You must know what you need to do. You must be able to ignore certain things so that you're able to go towards that destiny instead of being sidetracked. Some people are more easily um, invaded by these spirits than others are. Uh, but I think it causes havoc in families, in communities, in churches. Of course, at the national level, because you're talking about nations. Um, and, and I think that's what has happened over the two years. But I believe also there has been issues of settling power struggles. You know, what are my responsibilities? Um, how do we ensure that no one encroaches on what I should be doing? Or some people believe their responsibilities should be more because of their proximity uh, to the leader. But it's difficult to pinpoint any one person I know is a combination of issues. If you were to talk to people on the other side, they would probably say, oh, you know, Vice President Taylor is difficult to deal with. She's not a team player. Um, she's just a difficult person. However, when you look at the traits that I carry, and I believe they are positive traits, attributes are attributed to the male gender as strengths. However, if a woman strives and struggles to get into positions of trust, especially in a male-dominated society as ours, you'll find out that people will say, you know, she's difficult to deal with. She's hard to settle. She's not a team player. Exact same, same traits, two different persons, two different perceptions of how people are. Um, I know as a female, 
one of the very few females in the room. And as a mother, you strive to do a little bit more and, and bend a little bit and try to accommodate. But at my age, I have some strong beliefs. You know, there's some things I just won't do. And there's some things if I see, I will just say, hey, I don't think this is right. Though. It doesn't mean I'm trying to change the dynamics, but I'm having my say. So that tomorrow when something happens, people don't say, oh, you know, she sat and she didn't say anything. But again, people see it as being pushy, you know, and always wants her agenda on the table. So do you think you're, you're responsible for this negative reaction from people? A human person at this level that I am should never believe they are 100% free. And it would be naive of me to say so. Probably, uh, when you look at leadership styles of people, uh, you must be able to gauge, engage or gauge what you can do at any given point. I'm sure I have my own faults, uh, but I believe overall I've tried to work around major issues and we only raise them when you know, I'm really at my wit's end, that I've tried to say something or impact in a positive way or bring something to the table. And if I'm not able to have it said, maybe at a cabinet meeting, you know, then in some of the soft meetings that we usually hold amongst members of the cabinet, you know, I try to bring up. And I'm sure I have my part to play in it. Uh, I have much more experience in terms of my public service. Uh, so maybe my perspective, you know, has to be a little different as opposed to some people who had not had that privilege to work in different levels of governance um, as I have. And I have to remember that as I bring my issues to the table, I have to remember that others might not see it my way. But then I have my say and, and then I let it go. So I'm sure I have some part to play in in some of the issues that have happened. But I think I've tried my best to reduce the tension in many cases and to let things go when it just seemed that it was the best thing to do. As we go into year number three, I'll try harder. Do you think some of the inner circle of the Congress for Democratic Change respect and appreciate the position you hold? And I have to draw my answer from the perspective of the campaign. And I knew that I was a key figure in all of what we did. Whether it was deciding how, we, how many t-shirts we bought, or the fact that the Liberty Party had bought 100 vehicles and we didn't have any, and people were agitated. We need, you know, we need vehicles, we need motorbikes. And I don't remember any issue being discussed that my opinion wasn't sought for. And so I, I think during the campaign, there was a level of respect that I received from everyone, especially the young um, partisans. But we get into governance and there's a lot going on. The camaraderie that we enjoyed during the campaign seemed to have dissipated and people be begin to get involved or be engrossed with their own work at different levels. And so we meet, but there was now more rivalry. Uh, maybe someone wanted their project to succeed as opposed to someone else. And so you will find out that the friendship that we carried through the almost 18 months of campaigning has now dwindled to you know, people who were friends before who have a relationship beyond just the politics. But I must also look at the leaked tapes uh, that have come up within the past year. Uh, the superintendent of Bond County, a longtime friend and a sister for more than 25 years. I'm not sure why she spoke as she did. 
and all of the attending things that happened. And many people, including myself, thought, okay, it's in isolation. So let's, you know, forget it and move forward. But then when you hear from the chairman of the party, and I think he was sober, I think he was in his right frame of mind, I think he was actually frustrated and trying to talk about the issues that had him a little baffled. But his comments, you know, corroborate, you know, the comments made by the Bonn County Superintendent. And so I believe as a result of the two leaked tapes and the revelations from some of them, it could lead anyone to believe that it is because of the background talk, you know, for which I'm not a part, uh, could make some people believe that, okay, she's there, but she's an expendable asset. You know, um, if certain things continue, you know, we don't need her, we've already reached to where we are. I believe that some people think that way because I, I feel it, I see it at times when I go to different places. The interaction I would get maybe during the campaign is completely different. Now people are irritable. When you try to bring an issue, they don't you know, want to pay attention to listen to you. And it makes people feel really a little bit lost because whatever it is, we are one group working together to accomplish something. And we should be able to watch each other's back and protect the process, uh, the legal process, so that we all arrive at where we hope we'll be in the interest of our country. So I do believe that there is some level of disrespect in different places.